What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here with another episode of Unpopular Opinions, the Instagram version this time. I've made a substitution and it's Sim out and Slav <laughs> in. Uh, Slav, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be back here. It's good to be back in the good studio, isn't it? Here. Three long months. Nice <sighs> to be back here. Nice to see your face in person. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got John back again for the Unpopular Opinions. Doing, doing well, yeah, John? I like, these, I like these little series. Yeah, they're, they're good, aren't they? I think... Very, um, very juicy. We had good interactions in the Twitter version, so I think the Instagram version, there's some really interesting ones okay, in here, yeah, so cool. right. let's get stuck in. First one is from It's Devs to THFC, and the unpopular opinion is Undombele will be our best player in the future. I'm going to start with you on this one, Slav. Um, in the future, when's that? <laughs> That's a good question, but do you agree with it? Yeah. Um, I think there's lots of players in the team that can go on to be. I mean, Harry Kane's what, 26? Hung Min Son's 27. Um, Gio Lo Celso's uh, early 20s. So there's lots of players who can go on to be to be one of the best players in the cup. I think he'll definitely go on to be one of them. Gets his um, not maybe necessarily his attitude, but his nutrition and his his fitness right and sort himself out. And there's no reason why that why he wouldn't be mm. one of the best uh, players at the club. Certainly. Certainly got all the potential there, and I don't see why not. It's not an unfair statement, John. He's got the game, but he doesn't have the attitude, doesn't he? Does he? And I don't know whether he's just suddenly going to get that attitude. That's something that he needs to foster himself. Do you know what I mean? Um, I know Mourinho's working hard with him and trying to instill a little bit of that in him. I think, and I don't know what, what the effects of, of that. But... I'll tell you what. The pictures, well, from what we've seen, yeah. he does look a lot slimmer. He does. Yeah. He's wearing a woolly hat in twenty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's all they're doing. They're, they're, they're sweating him out. So. But I think I don't if, know. if I don't we know. can get him on song, then I think this statement is true. Well, we'll know from the first few games. And, you know, if, he, his, if his attitude changes, then quite possibly he could become one of the best players. Because the, uh, the technical ability this guy has is second yeah. to none, really. Yeah. Uh, one of the best we've seen at Tottenham in, in our time, I reckon. I um, so, yeah. But all right, let's move on. Uh, we've got two that are quite similar, so I'm going to do them at the same time. One from Gab3 Ward and one from THFC Charlie. Uh, the first one is Lo Celso starts in any Premier League team. And the other one is Lo Celso gets into every Premier League team except for Man City. Uh, we'll start with you on this one, John. I, I think he's brilliant, Lo Celso. I actually said, you know, when we did the rankings, I put him in world class. Yeah, you Just did. based on the last few performances. I know yeah. that's a little bit knee-jerk, but um, from what I've seen, he's absolutely spectacular player. And he's really, he's really come into, into his own, you know. And um, I actually think that he's going to be, I think almost everything's going to go um, play around him, you know, yeah. built, built around him. Um, I, th I think he's our new Modric, if I'm being honest. And I, and I don't know what's going to happen if we don't make Champions League. Isn't, isn't there a thing where he, we have to get Champions League? For, or he gets the option whether to bail out of the contract if we don't make Champions no, League? No, I don't think really, so. Well, he, you're, really, he really signed permanently. Yeah, exactly. That, that, per it was, a, it was yeah. originally a loan, yeah, but then yeah. we signed him permanently um, in the middle of the season. Yeah, so. well then, perfect then. I think, he, I think he's going to be the uh, focal point of our team, if I'm being honest. Um, so I think he's brilliant. But I don't know whether he'd get... I'm not sure whether he'd get into every team or not. Um, yeah, who, who? I personally who think he. I, I put no. Go on, no. go on. Who does he get? Who does he take? Who does he get in the team ahead of, in Liverpool? Who does mm. he replace? No, I'm asking like who. Yeah, who, I mean, who does he replace at Arsenal? At, at Arsenal, at Liverpool. Sorry, I think he gets into. So who who are, who are Liverpool's middle three? What? Um, You've got like Milner, Hel Henderson, Wijnaldum, Wijnaldum, Keita. Yeah, um, I mean, Milano, I think. Ox. I mean, I think Lascelles better than most of those. I think Lascelles is better than most of those. They all won the Champions League. You got, I, I'm sorry, I think he'd get into every single team. Ever, as a collective, ever, ever as a collective, yeah. yeah, I think they won the Champions League. They're about to win the league. Yeah, maybe but technically I think... he's better than something the likes of Jordan Henderson. They're, they're, they're different types of midfielders. Mm. All of them. Um, mm. I don't think he gets into every team in the Premier League. I also think he still is yet to score in the Premier or get an assist in the Premier League for us. Yeah. So I think everyone needs to maybe. Take a step back. I'm on the Lo Celso train. I think he's great. I think he'll be a great player for the future. But well, let's slow down. He's what played ten games in the Premier League. No, you got a point. I think. Let's I think there up. there are arguments to be had conclusion. both ways. I think Lo Celso hasn't had enough game time at Spurs as of yet. I think it took him time to like bed into the team as well because mm -hmm. of injury problems. So I think that. I don't think we can answer this question until around yeah, let's, let's, halfway let's through next season or something. In a, in a year, maybe in a year's time we can look at this question I think again. when we look back in a year's time, we'll, we'll, we'll right go, now, yeah, well, yeah, right now of course he, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Right now he doesn't get into every Premier League team. All right. Next up from S. Kubrick. And this is Harry Kane is starting slowly to decline as a player. Um, he's playing far too much football without having any backup players. Mm. Similar to Alexis Sanchez, too much football with no backups. Slav? 
Um, yeah, I think there's arguments to have both ways. I don't think he's declining as a footballer, but I think the injuries are starting to take its toll. All the ankle injuries, um, I mean, the hamstring one was a bad one. Yeah. And it is true, it, it, there's no one to take to give him a rest. That we, have, we must be the only club in the league without more than one right back. We only have one left back, one striker. We don't even have a defensive midfielder. Um, so we're really light in a lot of positions. Mm. We've always been light up top. And Harry Kane, there is a lot of pressure on him and he does get injured very easily. He is, he's got um, a glass ankle. Yeah. And he's got, obviously, now a hamstring problem, um, which probably won't go away. So I agree. I don't think... But then you you look at the too much football side of it. Sadio Mane has played uh, probably non-stop for the last two, two and a half years. He's been to the Africa Cup of Nations, the, um, the World Cup. Uh, he played all the way up until June with the Champions League final last year. Didn't really get a rest. Um, he didn't. He, he did. I think he maybe missed one or two games all season for Liverpool with a slight knock. Yeah. So it, it's arguments we have both ways. I don't think he's declining as a footballer, Harry Kane. There's a big difference. I think he's very injury prone, and I do agree that he needs to be rested, and we need to get someone in to enable him to have a rest. Because otherwise, uh, he's just going to miss three months. Well, a season I, well, I do agree with that. I actually do think he's declining as a footballer, and I think um, I noticed. I, I'll tell you, I noticed the exact moment where his game started to go. That was February two thousand and eighteen. That's when his game started to go on the decline. I actually started writing that up in Spurs groups, and I got so much heat for that. I was probably the first Spurs fan to say, <laughs> "I'm noticing, I'm noticing him going down a little bit here." He was scuffing balls. He was getting the ball caught under his feet a lot, and I was writing into these Spurs groups. I said. He doesn't look the same player. That actually came at the same... I'll tell you when that came. I'm, I'm not saying this is the causal factor, but it came around the time he had his first child. And I don't, don't know whether that played a part in him not spending as much time at the training ground. What, for, whatever, for whatever reason, I know it's a little bit of a dip. And I, I, didn't think, I don't think he's been world-class since 2017. I, that's my personal opinion. I, I strongly um, disagree with that one. He, well, if you look at his 2017 season, no, it was great. I yeah, think, but, but so, but he's not going to recreate that. It is very difficult um, when you have a bad ankle injury to come back and and, and that plays firing. a big There's part. There's a lot of pressure that on him. That plays a big part. Um, and he's always rushed back. He is because he's, he's, he's already rushed striking. Back. He's, he rushes he's himself rushed. back as well. Of course, but wouldn't you? No, well, the, the, you made the good point. I think that there need we, there needs to be another quality striker really keeping him on his toes. We don't have that. I don't buy this True. argument that oh no, but he wouldn't be able to play. He'd have to be on the bench. No, if you had a Messi there, if you had a really another top striker, you'd find a way to play both of them. You Messi. would. If you had another top, if you had another world class striker, hypothetically, if you had another, another, <laughs> no, you had you had another world class striker, there's no you can play both. You can play both. Of course. I and mean, they I played agree. Llorente and Kane when we went to Real Madrid, so it can work. It's yeah, just yeah, the fact yeah. that it's, there's this sort of weird myth that you can only Kane play can Kane play up the top. Ten as well, I think. You know, yeah, so that, that is a fault of the club to not have a competitive second striker. But back, but back on Slav's point um, about the injuries and stuff, do you reckon because of the injuries and because he's rushed back, he is declining, or do you reckon it's just not he's not declining at all? I don't think it's. Uh, it depends. I don't think he's declining. He's not losing his ability. He's not losing his. I he's, think not he lo he's not lo lost his pace. Me, still, I personally don't. When, when was the last time he scored a goal out of nothing? Uh, Burnley at home from about twenty-five yards, thirty yards. What made it? Made the goal? Yeah, himself. you know what I'm talking about. We're well, in five nil. Proper. Yeah, he did. Thumped it from about. Five. He compare, did. Yeah. Compare the cane to that the was... cane of the let's say the Chelsea game. You know, like from the five-three. You know. Yeah. He was unplayable back then. He was completely unplayable. The, the cane now he gets goals that you think he should. I don't think he's no. declining. I really don't also, think he's declining. Goal. Not Bright, much. Brighton but he, at knows. home, he he got us back into it by with that. I mean, Ryan made the save, and then he somehow managed to adjust his body and, mm. and score again. And obviously, he's been injured ever since that game. Yeah. Uh, built the game after that, but and there yeah, was that one goal where he was stumbling as well. Was that yeah, the goal? Yeah. Was that the goal you're talking no, about? Leicester, that was a Leicester where he's tripped on the floor and still scored. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I, I, he's that. still a brilliant player. Don't get me wrong. He's still like you could argue world class, but I'm just saying he's not quite the X factor player he was 2016, 2017. In my opinion, I've but, definitely noticed like a, a, a lack of sharpness. He, I think he's lost a yard of pace as well. Do you reckon I that's think the whole team? It's not just him. I think that plays a part, but I actually do notice a, a drop with Kane just independently. I've noticed it as well. That's I think we're very lucky to have Harry Kane at our club, and a lot of the time, a lot of the time, it just people just take it for granted. And I think he's I don't think he's declining as a footballer. I think we've got hopefully if he saves, we've got many more years of one of the best goal scorers we've ever seen yeah. at the club. And I think his goal record, even even with his injuries this season, seventeen goals this season for the club. 
and that's not included. Is that with? I don't even a lot of those goals though through. come from like where he's like buying a penalty and then like you know he gets the penalty and then he keeps that. I don't care. How yeah, but that's what great strikers. I don't do, care right? how I know, the ball goes in the goal. It's, 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 a, it's a it's a big difference to what used to be like. We used to get time? a brace every couple of games. You get a brace. Do you know what I mean? But how many times did Alan Shearer do that? And he's recognised as one of the best strikers Premier League has ever seen. If you think of it like a bell curve, I think Shearer's bell curve came when he was sort of like you know mid mid to mid to late twenties. His peak of his bell curve came maybe around yeah. then. I think Kane's bell curve came in around two thousand. 16, 17. And I think you're seeing the. the it's hard. The it's start, hard to say that until start of the that downward of the. It's hard curve. to say that until you've seen his whole career in front of yeah, him. Yeah, and you could look at stat. Uh, Sim loves his stats. You could look at the goal, <laughs> goal to game ratio. No, 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 it's, it's, it's all opinion, it's opinions, opinions, and, and if that's yours, I, fair I, enough. I, think I just so, think that. Yeah. I, I, I just think that, look, look, he's still a brilliant player, if, right? If Harry was to leave in the next year or two, I think you would then look back at this and think, "Wow, I wish we had him. I think I wish I wish we." No, I'm not saying sell him. I'm not saying. No, I know, but I just think. I just think that we, we, we're all just so accustomed to having Harry yeah. Kane. I just think that Yeah, I just don't think he's at the peak of his power. That's all I'm saying. All right. Well, let me know in the, co in the comment section below. Is Harry Kane past it or is he not? not, past it, not past <laughs> is he declining? That's the question. Yeah, is he slight, declining? Slight decline of the bell curve. Um, let's move on to acro underscore spicy hobbit. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the opinion here is Winks is better than Deli Alley. We'll start with you on this oh, one, John. No, go somewhere else. <laughs> go slab first, please. They're completely different footballers, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Harry Winks is a number a number six. Well, he wants to be a number six, or, a, or a, as he is the number eight at Tottenham. Deli Ali is a number ten. King. I mean, you couldn't play Harry Winks as a second striker or as a mm. false nine, could you? I mean, I'm not Harry Winks' biggest fan, as John knows. I think we agree. <laughs> please. <laughs> I think we agree that his his pirouettes and his sideward sideward passing is mm. is not what we really want. Mm. So I think Deli Ali, as a footballer, is I think Harry Winks is tidy, keeps the ball well, yeah. keeps things moving. But Deli Ali's um, very underrated in terms of his movement, his ability. Um, someone John said before when was last time popping up out of nowhere to do mm. Deli Ali in a nutshell, yeah. really. Yeah. So. Um, mm. Yeah, that's that. That's I think Deli Ali is a better footballer than Harry Winks. I hundred percent agree with that. Yeah, you? I think you know the thing about Winks, and I've already made videos about this and come, had a lot of heat about it. Winks is very busy on the ball. You know, like Scott Park used to be very busy on the ball, so it almost looks as though they're controlling the game. But when they're actually on the ball, they're not. He's not really progressing it well enough. And he actually, I think it actually has the. I call it the caution paradox, where you take the cautious pass, thinking it's keeping the the, the game safe. But actually, it starts to increment. Like one cautious pass leads to another, which ends yeah. up going backwards, putting you under more pressure. I would, I would, uh, I'm also interested. What do you think of when you know when he gets the ball and he just dribbles aimlessly in one direction and sort of like, <laughs> like towards a corner? Yeah, <laughs> you, I mean, I actually like him on the ball. I think when he runs into spaces, he's actually quite rapid, and he actually that actually relieves yeah, got, the pressure a little. Yeah, bit. but you're set, you're, you're um, down but, talking uh, winks all this. Yeah, yeah but but, but what's Ali Ali all right, done? So, the thing about Ali, I think, is suffered is he's not really fitting into this into the new um, style of uh, the, the new Spurs. Ali could really thrive as almost like a second striker up with uh, Harry Kane. That's his favourite position. Yeah, and in, in those days, we were camped out in the opposition's half for nearly every game, right? He always played like the a free... The good old days. The good old days. <laughs> he was like a, it was like a free role, right? It was like a free role where he could go for everyone. He was just like a kid on the on the park, you know, like doing little nutmegs and just like having a laugh. And he was really able to shine and like really express himself, really flourish. Now that we're dropping deeper, now that we're more depleted, now not, we're not strong as we were before, he's now being asked to do a duty that he's not used to, which is actually being more of a kind of a, a workhorse in midfield, trying to like, you know, put in tackles where he might not have been even needed to put in tackles before. But he does pop up with, um, you know, a killer pass or a killer... Maybe, I know his goals have dried up a little bit, but I think that's more down to the team. Um, but for me, he's got way more um, star quality than, than Winks. And I think, you know... Winks just does a um, a very pedestrian role. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the thing on De I think Delhi is the kind of player that you love it, uh, even though we moan about him a lot. If we wouldn't, you wouldn't want to see him playing for another club. You'd hate him playing for another club. Do you think Delhi Ali's a luxury player? Yes and no. Um, put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, he looks like that at the moment, just because yeah. he's not really looking like he's fitting in. Jose likes therapy. him though. Mm -hmm. Jose does like um, him. I don't know, the jury's out. The Gordon jury's out. <laughs> I think we'd miss him a lot if, we, if he went. Yeah, potentially. Um, let's move on. David Dom, 11. David Bentley was undervalued. I know you've got a bit to say on this one. Do I? Because um, you mentioned it when we were doing the uh, we were doing some video and you mentioned it, David Bentley being undervalued. I, I think so a little bit. I mean, he's, he had really good techers about him, didn't he? 
Um, unfortunately, he was like second string to Lennon, so he didn't really get much of a chance to shine. When he when he did come on, he had, did have a string of games where he was looking pretty good. Mm. Um, I love the fact that he, he hated Arsenal, despite yeah. playing for them. You know, like players that have played for old clubs, they don't celebrate. And he was just like, oh, yeah, it pops off, you know. I love <laughs> that love about that. him. Um, I, know, I just think he just fell out of love with the game a little bit. And, um, you know, that maybe showed a little bit on the pitch. He in no way took his Blackburn Rovers um, performance to, to yeah, us, did he? was quality he? at Blackburn. Um, and he just, he just didn't look like his heart was in it, really. But I still thought he, was a quali- I still thought he had a quality... Um, Technique about him, do you know what I mean? Um, sort of like a like a he's like a, 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 yeah, a pound like shot a Beckham. Beckham, Beckham, Beckham. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit harsh on, on him, but uh, yeah, no, I just, really. he never really Beckham hit the floor. He never really uh, got going. That's the thing with uh, Bentley. Stab? Yeah, no, I, I I can't really disagree with with what John said. Um, scored a couple of great goals. You think of the Emirates. You think of that free kick in the nine one. Yeah. Um, obviously, he had good keeper games. should have done better though. That <laughs> uh, as we said, lot. Um, Last night with the the winner over Liverpool, it was his shot from thirty five yards or whatever that yeah. was just to to get that goal. He, he popped up yeah. with moments, but yeah, yeah, all in all, his heart wasn't really in it. Mm. All right. So there you have it. That is the first episode of the Instagram Unpopular Opinions. Episode two to come your way very, very shortly. So check out for that. Thank you, Slav, and thank you, John, for joining me yet again. And as always, come, come on, you come Spurs. On.